cunts. Don't forget to click the subscribe button. Um, also, one of the one of the conditions was the siding. Right? They wanted to keep a certain portion of land, which was about half half the, the amount of land there, and also. They wanted to keep their Porsche Carrera, their Porsche Cayenne, their BMW <laughs> X5, Mercedes <laughs> yeah. 300 Cavalier, and their Toyota Hilux, which were all part of the business. <laughs> is, that them, <laughs> is that the photo of them there? <laughs> <laughs> but that gives you an idea of the kind of ad backs <laughs> to look out for, because obviously people are running a lot of their personal shit in mm. companies as well. These are bastard offspring, or yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the location. It says there, but it's more like bumfuck Mississippi because these places are so far away, in between, in the middle of nowhere. It's like it is the closest town, which is like three hours away from, and then these sides are another hour off each side in each direction. Oh wow, so, so that's, that's quite, which that's is in the bush. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it's in the bush, bush. that's out of the scrub. It has a population of about three and a half thousand people. And when you're looking at an aged care facility that has 80 beds with an expansion of 20, you know, you're talking about you know, 2% of the population is living in that aged care facility. <laughs> so that was one of the reasonings why we were to kind of turned off this deal as well. Um, mainly because if a competitor stepped into the area or that town got disbanded or everyone just got old and died, there'd be nothing left and you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to sell it. Um, so that's a load for the lodge. They always look so nice. Yeah, they do. Yep. Yeah. They lie. It's <laughs> yeah. all lies. So this is the floor plans that they had with uh, plans approved for another 20 beds above. Um, and we thought we'd leverage with my construction license and experience we could do that for a third, you know, two thirds of the price. And we just got sucked in, so we keep scrolling down. Look at the, uh, the financials here. So Any chance you could blow that up, please? No, it's not over here. No, it's a PDF. You can. Is it, is it, use your, a, there's a different X on the icon. Plus and the minus up on the uh, header. Well, use your finger yeah. on the pad thing. And use a plus and a minus. And no, it yep. fits a page that fits a width. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. You see that? Yeah. So, with we've got a revenue of about uh, 7.4 million. And then we've got our expenses, which mainly comprise of staff wages, uh, which is the biggest cost, the staffing cost, which was another reason why with this Royal Commission, if they increase the uh, staffing ratios, it was gonna have a big impact on the smaller players because that will eat up a lot of their margins. Um, scroll down a little bit more. Got so the, the thing with the uh, Australian aged care market, there's probably 98% of them are sold going concern, which means the operating business with the real estate. It's very rare to find just the operating business in Australia. And it's just, uh, I don't know if it's a cultural thing or if it's just a risk thing, because they're purpose-built facilities, if the tenant moves out, you know, the landlord's held left with an asset that they can't do much else with other than bring another provider in. And if that facility is not up to scratch in terms of regulations and standards, then they either have to bulldoze or update, which is a lot of uh, capex for them. Um, the other reason as well is it's uh, risky for the tenant if they're in a building that they don't own because if these the rent increases don't match their revenue increases from the government funding of their licensing, they quickly get squeezed out as well on their margin on that side. So if the CPI is fast, it's growing faster than the government revenue. So, so the, the government pays for these old people to be in here? Yep. 100%. 
Not for hundred percent. Some people have a hundred percent. Depends on your financial situation. So if you have less than two hundred and sixty thousand dollars worth of assets or cash, when you reach a certain age, the government will fund everything. If you have more than that, they're they're expecting you to put up a deposit. And what happens is it's called a RAD, which is a refundable accommodation deposit. And you put up, say, 200,000 or 300,000, 400,000, whatever it is in that area, depending on the average uh, median house price minus 20%. Um, you put up that bond, and then that is refunded to you in full when you pass away or if you move to another, another place. Well, it doesn't do you much good when you're dead. <laughs> it goes back to your estate. But the thing is, with that, it's held in trust. But while you while you're holding it, that capital you can use for capital expenditure to expand, to purchase other sites, to grow. As long as you keep a certain amount available for X amount of debts in that month that you need to pay out to those estates. So there's a bit, you'll see later that it ends up being a lot of cash. But you'll see there's an EBITDA number here, and then there's an EBITDA number. Or lower. So the EBITDA number is obviously the operations, um, and the EBITDA is the less of the, the rental. So because you're looking at asset and operations, you have to look at that rental is basically coming to you, but in another entity, because you also own it. So it's like two way play. Which is on the larger piece of land, and you know they all look pretty similar. And they're all similar layouts as well. They usually have a wing, so then they allocate a number of nurses to that area to make the efficiencies, and they can run past all each bed, and then they have another wing as well. It's not really the way they have it laid out. Got a revenue of about 10 million, 10 million two mil. and you've got your EBITDA on about 2.5. So, normally with the, the EBITDA per bed, you'll see um, figures thrown around. The average is between 12 to $15,000 per bed. But I've seen them up to twenty-one thousand dollars per bed, but that's when you really rock and roll and everything's down pat. So the revenue per bed using this format, EBITDA, uh, is you know up to almost twenty thousand per bed. Per resident, yeah, per year. You have a hundred beds. And and how much would the person? Well, so the person has to pay to be in here. <coughs> the government's paying. No, so that's so what what expenses is the old? So they take they take fifty one dollars twenty seven cents per day out of their pension, so it comes straight out of their pension, which is about eighty five percent of the pension, and then they're left with the rest of it for pocket money. But I don't know what you do with twelve dollars afterwards. Um, well, and coffee then, latte. <laughs> but they take them on excursions and they do other bits and pieces. So this is a this is a full fledged. From soup to nuts, they take care of the old people. Yeah. It's called high care, so it's it's a different terminology. I know in other parts of the world, aged care or uh, assisted living. Um, assisted living in Australia is probably you live in your own home and someone comes and assists you. Mm. Mm. It's like a home care, mm. whereas residential aged care is nursing home. Nursing home. And they, they have doctors around the clock? Or? Doctors on site, they have uh, qualified nurses and they have all the stuff. This would be like, um, but not, not tennis courts, basketball courts, golf courses. When you're looking at the high end stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. So this is four star, this isn't five star. No. Okay, this is four star. Yeah. Um, but it looks pretty nice, you know, when I was a kid, Going to school, I never stayed in any place this fucking nice. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you. So, yeah. Yeah. when you move into these facilities, you have to see that doctor on site as your physician? Um, as your you can bring your own, you can call your own doctor in. Um, That's money out of your pocket, though. Yeah.
But even that, you know, Medicare covers the doctor's costs anyway. So healthcare is one hundred percent not a, a cash item for you as a resident there. Pretty much. Well, they're taking your pension, so you know. Like, you well, what, if, what if you got a twenty million dollar your pension? You'll be paying for your medication. You'll be paying for your haircut. You'll be paying for. Well, that's the haircut's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> if you get twenty million dollars in your pension, you're probably go to the private one, right? Yeah. 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 You're not gonna. I mean, the private ones, they dress for dinner and, you know... Like, yeah, that, that, that's okay. That, that's what I want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Never seen so many wine bottles <laughs> come out of it. Oh, that's, <laughs> what it was, that's, what wanted, that's exactly what Sally wants to hear. <laughs> By the way, I tested one of the um, uh, espresso martinis. Um, uh, uh, the strong. Is that I said, that, you know, not everybody will, will take that much alcohol. Sally says, really? You know, she's back there. She's like this stir in the pot. <laughs> are they are they gin based? Huh? Vodka based. Vodka. Vodka based. You can't take all you know there's alcohol in it, but you can't really differentiate whether it's vodka or turpentine. <laughs> so this could be a wild night. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's a different you, you just stop drinking that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But okay, so let's get back. So I'm a guy that worked for uh, Macquarie. I have a three hundred thousand dollar year pension. Okay, I worked for thirty years. Oh well, no, no, um, it doesn't really work. doesn't work that way. So the, the, when we say pension, we mean a government like social security, like social security, uh, social security. Okay. like forty thousand dollars a year I get from social security on my Correct. social security old get check. That's right. Right. Yeah. Okay, right. that's. But if in Australia, if you've got a certain amount of assets, you don't get the pension. You don't get the pension. So you get. You get, get zero. Fuck off. You get nothing. You look after yourself. So, 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 probably, yeah. so it may not bankrupt like ours. And so what yeah. What the government has been pushing everyone to do is create this superannuation. So everyone's in superannuation. So you're building your own pension fund for yourself. Like for yourself okay? in the future. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think that's what it is, although I don't know. The okay, so does, like like somebody flies in. Uh, to uh, Melbourne, he's not a citizen there, and he gets sick. Uh, I mean, and they rush him off to the emergency hospital because he had a pain in his chest. Okay, I cannot answer that. Does he have to? He have to pay for that? You pay. Yeah, you pay. You pay. I cannot answer yeah, that. The guy with the pain in his chest. Situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly my family situation. They live in my parents live in Melbourne, right? You pay. You're fucked. That's why when my dad had a heart attack, he flew back to Singapore. Then he got treated because he's still a Singapore citizen. It's kind of, it's messed up like that. You, okay. can buy private, you can buy private medical insurance, but it's still going to cost you an arm. In this country, you've got a pain in your chest, and the UK pays. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter who you are. Oh, that's good. That's why this system's so beautiful. Bankrupt. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's triple fucked. Yeah, so anybody, right. you know, not, I don't know about anybody. So basically, they're trying to, in, in years to come, there will be no government social security type pension. That'll be gone because every Australian is forced, every employer is forced to contribute to a superannuation fund. I think what is it, nine percent of the moment going up to twelve in a couple of years. So it kills us as employers, but we're gonna contribute for every employee to this superannuation fund and then it's invested by whoever. Poorly. Well, now, well, quite a few years ago, they, they uh, if your funds at a certain size and that you can you can create a self-managed super fund. So then you manage your own money. Then you manage yourself, so but, but there are governing uh, governances around that. Just remember, eighty-seven percent of the money managed today worldwide has ne- is managed by somebody less than thirty years old. That's a scary proposition, mm-hmm. yeah. especially when the fact that what the, the algorithms and the way that the markets are triggered now, uh, the that's. That's why I believe the next down leg is going to be a big fucking down leg. It's going to eliminate the, the girls from the uh, women and the boys from the men. The um... Okay, go ahead. Yeah. And Australia hasn't seen a downturn in 30 years either. Yeah, well, so a little blip in the nothing's day. forever. Nothing's forever. The only thing forever until you kill them is your mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then, then, but then the... Yeah, well, then you're at home. We're on YouTube. <laughs> Metaphorically speaking, <laughs> metaphorically, I would never hurt my mother in law. Never. <laughs> she has a life and she deserves to be alive and all that. Go ahead. But you'll see as well, there's, there's a balance here of RADs or bonds of about seven, uh, $8.7 million across 46 of the uh, residents, which is about half the residents. So the other half, I would assume, are getting that direct Medicare assistance that's being paid for. And those bonds 
are being held in trust, which we can use for expenditure of capex as well. So you can borrow against those. Yeah. Or can you, can well, you can use the interest. You can use the interest. You yeah. can't take that money. You can use the interest that's accrued. Yeah. You keep all the interest off that, and I'm pretty sure you can use a certain portion of that money as long as that money comes back in a certain type of period of time. Or it's promised to come back. Okay. It's, it's not a long recourse. Long yeah. recourse. <laughs> I mean, you laugh. Some, the only thing some of you have ever learned from me is non recourse. <laughs> <laughs> nothing else matters. I mean, believe me, in the world of finance, nothing fucking else matters. Nothing. Okay, so these are just the empty plots of land, you know, there's that one and a half hectare there. Jesus. Um, oh, that, is that, the, that looks the bush. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're all yeah bush that's the bush. bush. Yeah. And that's the one where they want to keep the house in the car. Now, the, the people walking down the street with a hat and, 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 and boots and, 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 and uh, how, do you, how do you say it when you say hello to somebody in Australia? Good day. Good day. Good day. Are they all walking around like that? Good day, mate. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, we have, if I combine the, the EBITDA of the two operating uh, businesses, we've got about 2.8 million in EBITDA. If you look at the actual asset value of all the assets that we have to purchase as well. We've got, uh, there's about 14 and a half million um, in the There's about uh, 25 and a half in We've got probably about three and a half in and another 1.9 in So that's just the assets themselves, that's land and the improvements. Which are producing 4.2.8 or 4.5 EBITDA. Yeah, EBITDA, 4.5, EBITDA, 2.8. Um, and then on top of that, you're going to have another 20 million, roughly, of the bonds that you can earn interest and you can use for. Um, when we were looking at this deal, if you look at the pure EBITDA numbers and you say you use a four times value, you're looking at an operating company value of about 12 million, or just under. Um, so when you look at all this together, we're, you know, we're trying to put a figure on what we're going to buy it for. They said that they would be happy with 57 million, which is a lot less than all this put together. Um, which is what drew us into the, the exercise in the first place. Um, so when you look at 20 million plus your another 40 million, 45, and your 12 million in operating company, you're... This you're is what, sorry, why are you... I don't, I'm sorry, I don't understand the, the 20 million in bonds. It's basically cash, that's see. I, I, I get what it is, but um, when you said the 57 is, is that including... The, the bonds as well, is that, yeah. is that what you mean? So, yeah. so 37 without the, the bonds and the bonds sit there. Okay. Correct. But I mean, simple, if it's 37 and it's, let's just call it 3 million EBITDA, uh, so it's something under, uh, it's still 10 times EBITDA they want. Correct. But they all want that. You're purchasing assets. Yeah, well, I understand. I understand. So that's why, you know. Is, is it possible to do a, purchase, a sale and lease back? I mean, that's where we were. Well, our idea was, um, you know, these two sites that have 100 beds approved on them already, on both of them, you know, we could, we could develop them, break them off and sell them off if we had to. So I'll, I'll In the them. middle of nowhere. Well, people need to... Need well, I understand. So there is a demand for in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, I'm on into HQ. Look, it, it, there's, there's pluses and there's negatives to it because, like I was saying to Roberto, people in the middle of nowhere, it's very unlikely that your site's going to be sanctioned because the people who work there live there and it's a small community, so they're going to do right by the, the residents and they're going to do right by the business. Otherwise, work gets around very quickly. But then there's the negatives of you know, how do you sell this business afterwards or this piece of real estate that's sole purpose just for real for age care. Well, if it's got a 7% ROI, you go up to Toronto, <laughs> you walk in the door of the, with the new name, and now that the, he gave me the new name, and you sit there until they buy from you. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, the, 
when these money. funds buy these things, Mr. Pena, yes, sir. Uh, do they do they do they separate the asset cost completely and? Well, it depends. Some for some funds that are cash flow funds, mm. it depends on you know their mix. There are funds that you know that uh, more commercially oriented, where they take into consideration the, the assets, the real estate, the property. Because most of these funds, years and years and years ago, after World War II, started as property funds because they were uh, building uh, up Europe after the war. They were building up um, uh, America. They, didn't, they were just building up America. They didn't want to be building a bombshell things that got bombed out. But that most of these, ninety-five percent of all these, started as property funds. And uh, you know, the, the guys that started, they're all gone now. They'll be dead by now. But the, the bent is towards property, and that's why they like property associated with the uh, with the loan because that's what the, they grew up on. That's what they, they uh, you know they cut their teeth on uh, 50, 60 years ago, and even thirty, forty years ago.